Skyrim is a special game in that there are an almost endless number of ways to play through the game. It seems the only limit is your imagination. But what if you wanted to play through the game in a way it was never intended to be played? Can you beat Skyrim without taking any damage? Before the hows and whys, we must create our character. A few minutes on Google was all I needed to make the decision to play as a wood elf. They're good with archery and stealth, and I almost always play as an orc, so the change is a welcome one. I named myself Invertebrate because, you know, lack of a spine, weakling, we can't take any damage. Not the most clever name, but it doesn't really matter. After the dragon attacks Helgen and we get control, it's time to set my health to 1. I do this using console commands so that I don't have to manually reload a save every time I take damage. With my total health at 1, any damage of any kind will kill me and force me to try to get through that situation without taking damage. The good part about Skyrim, unlike some of the Fallout games, is that you can choose to never increase your health when you level up. So we only need to use console commands this one time. Roughly 15 minutes in, and we die for the first time. Believe it or not, fire bad. After I entered Helgen Keep, I made sure that the difficulty was as low as it could go, then I got my hands cut free by Rayloth, and the real game begins as we enter combat for the first time. Before that though, you can see from the skills screen that my health is in fact at 1. Until I get a bow later on, my strategy is to sit back and only strike when I can get the killing blow. With the loot of dead Imperial soldiers in my possession, I marched onward with a sword in hand, ready to cower and let Rayloth do most of the fighting for me. Something fun about this run is that because your health is so low, it's not uncommon to get executed by an enemy if they land a hit on you. After the first time that happened, and I got a good look at myself, I did something. See, armor can absorb some of the damage you take, and since the entire point is to avoid damage at all costs, I decided that armor would not be worn for the rest of the game. I did attempt to charge headfirst into the Imperial soldiers in the next room, but that didn't really work out so well. I picked a few locks, waited for Rayloff and the other Stormcloaks to kill the Imperials, and finally got a bow. The bow and arrow will be my best friend throughout this playthrough, alongside the sneak and archery skills. The rest of the escape went off without a hitch. I activated the Thief Blessing, rode the river, talked to Girder to figure out where to go next, sold most of my stuff to Lucan Valerius, and was off to see the Jarl of Whiterun. I was incredibly respectful when speaking to the Jarl. I wore my cleanest cloth. Farangar, the court wizard, told me I was to retrieve the Dragonstone, so I looked at the map and headed in the general direction necessary to accomplish such a task. Along the way, I killed a hunter and swapped my longbow for a hunting bow. When I arrived at Bleak Falls Barrow, I took a sneaky approach to killing the bandits, and it was harder than it probably should have been. Probably because I suck dick at both aiming and being sneaky. For whatever reason, the troublemakers inside were easier to kill, which leveled me up. I proceeded to kill a bandit outlaw, solve a puzzle, kill some skeevers, and was confronted by a giant fucking spider. I hate spiders. Nothing is supposed to have eight legs. It's wrong and immoral. Once the spider was slain, I recovered the Golden Claw, encountered the Draugr for the first time, who are relatively easy to take out, since you can get a few arrows into them by the time they get up, found the Dragonstone, and killed the Draugr Overlord by hiding on some rocks where it couldn't reach me, and loaded him up with arrows. But there's no time to celebrate, because there's a dragon on the loose! Well, there are lots of dragons, but this particular dragon has the Jarl in a bit of a tizzy. I expected the dragons to be a real pain in the fanny going into this run, and this dragon was no exception. Luckily, I was able to hide in the tower and hit him with arrows while he was distracted by the White Run guards. After I absorbed the dragon's soul and harvested his bones, the Jarl bestowed to me the great gift of a donkey to carry all my stuff. I sold some stuff in Riverwood, killed a few wolves, leveled up again, began climbing the 7 million stairs or whatever the fuck, avoided a troll by using my donkey as bait, met the Greybeards, performed their perverted tasks, and was off on another adventure, another go find this thing for me quest. This time I was tracking down the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. As I ventured through the wilderness, I found myself in Labyrinthian, and uh, there were a lot of trolls there. Not sure why, maybe they were hoping it housed the greatest puzzle market in all of Tamriel. I tried to fight them, but it proved to be a worthless endeavor. My donkey was lost, so I just ran away. There wasn't anything too interesting in Ustingrav. More bandits, some conjurers, some draugr, actually a lot of draugr, and then the floor of fire. I used whirlwind sprint to go from rock to rock, avoiding the tiles that would set off the fire. 
as if the first set of fire floor wasn't bad enough. Up next was more fire floor and another giant spider. This time around, I used the scroll of hysteria to drown the spider in fear, forcing it to flee for up to 60 seconds. Ample time for me to scoot on by and discover that, oh no, the horn has been horn napped. I wasn't going to return to the Greybeards empty handed. So I followed the clues, a note saying, meet me at this inn in Riverwood, and track down the cunt who stole it. Her name is Delphine, and she's a criminal scum. She gave me the horn back, I returned it to the Greybeards, and they welcomed me as the Dragonborn. We had a small ceremony in which they all screamed at me. They didn't get me any presents though, not gonna lie, that hurt my feelings a little bit. Fighting back tears, I returned to Delphine, and she told me what we were going to do, kill another dragon. Awesome, great, because dragons are so fun to fight when you can't take any damage whatsoever. I used the same strategy for this dragon as I did with the one near Helgen, though this one was a bit harder because I didn't have a tower to hide in. When the dragon returned to the grave, Delphine had another stupid idea, sneak into the Thalmor embassy. To prepare for that, I went back to Whiterun to sell what I didn't need and bought more arrows. It's not like you can just waltz right into the Thalmor embassy, you need an evite. And the only person who can get you one is Malborn in solitude. Unfortunately, you can't take a whole lot of stuff with you, so I gave him all my arrows, an amulet of Talos, and an imperial bow and was ready to get the party started. Inside the embassy, I had to figure out what they knew about the dragons, and that was not easy. See, normally it wouldn't be obscenely difficult to kill all the Thalmor guards and soldiers, but they are very perceptive. If you get near them, they'll know you're there, which makes stealth killing them especially difficult. The sneak damage bonus has been my crutch thus far, and it just wouldn't cut it this time. If it were just taking on the Thalmor one at a time, I could get by without the bonus, but they all attack you when you attack one of them and it takes multiple arrows to kill them. To be perfectly honest, I thought I was going to meet my match here. Then, for the hell of it, I checked the difficulty. I'd been playing on Adept, but the hardest difficulty is Novice. Let's just ignore the fact that I'm a fucking moron and move on, eh? On Novice, you deal two times damage to enemies. You also take half as much damage, but that's not relevant. Even on Novice, though, this wasn't easy. What I ended up doing was peeking out from behind cover just long enough to land an arrow on an enemy, then running back inside, waiting for a second, then going back outside and doing it all again. All told, it took me over 45 minutes to get the information I needed and escape the Thalmor embassy. Back in Delphine's sex dungeon, I was instructed to track down someone named Esburn, who's been hiding out in the tunnels below Riften. On the way to Riften, I made a... discovery. It's a rare and illustrious floating tree. Please take a moment to admire it in all of its barky glory. Alright, that's enough. Don't get carried away. Before I could actually get to Esburn, I had to steal a ring and place it in someone's pocket. Wasn't very challenging. Before heading down into the Ratway, I spent some gold and got my sneak skill leveled up a bit. There were more Thalmor down in the Ratway, but my donkey was with me, so I got through them without too much of an issue. With Esburn back alive, Delphine, myself, and Esburn put our heads together to come up with our next plan of attack. This time, we're searching for Alduin's Wall in the Sky Haven Temple. Guarding the temple were a bunch of Forsworn. I picked off a few from afar while Delphine and Esburn handled the rest. And then another dragon showed up. Can you guess who wasn't gonna stick around to fight it? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with P. Deeper in the temple, I legitimately thought this run was about to be over. There's a door thing that can only be opened with the Dragonborn's blood, so you have to slice your hand to get it open. I really thought that would deal damage, even if it was just a point or two, but it didn't. I was even more relieved after that door opened than I was when I left the Thalmor Embassy. After leaving the temple, I did the only logical thing you can do from this high up. I made my donkey stand on the ledge and screamed so loud she went flying. It really was beautiful. There's nothing quite like watching your donkey go soaring through the air and plummeting violently into the earth. Next, it was back to the Greybeards to learn a new shout that would allow me to finally put a stop to Alduin's evil plans. But even the Greybeards have their limits. Or maybe they're just tired of dealing with my shit. Either way, I was taught a new shout that would clear fog. How exciting. Then I met their glorious leader, Parthenax, a dragon. Parthenax told me that I'd need a The Elder Scrolls trademark to cast Alduin through time, and the only way to find someone who could help me find an Elder Scroll is in the College of Winterhold. So I bought a horse, named him Stupid, and was off to Winterhold. Fun fact about Stupid the horse, he can swim in water and, more importantly, he takes damage on my behalf when being attacked by wolves. Convenient and safe for the environment. 
I gained entrance to the College of Winterhold through the power of polite conversation, spoke to Shrek's cousin Urag, journeyed further north to meet with Septimus Cygnus, checked to make sure my health was still safely at one, and was off to the Alfland Cathedral. I don't know if this is unpopular opinion, but I really hate all this Dwemer shit. I find it incredibly boring. I'm skipping over most of this part because nothing very interesting happened. It was all stealth killing and other such nonsense. My game also crashed here quite a bit for whatever reason. Nevertheless, I pushed through all that ancient bullshit and got to the land of the giant jellyfish, Blackreach. I killed a dwarven centurion and entered the tower of, of Mzark. Mark? Zark? Mzark. Who cares? The important thing is that I used the lexicon to obtain the Elder Scroll, gave the inscribed lexicon to Cygnus, and returned to Parthenax, who instructed me to read the Elder Scroll trademark at the Time Wound. Then I took a trip through time as I watched ancient heroes of old use Dragonrend to banish Alduin from Skyrim. After returning to present day, Alduin arrived and was looking for a fight. As is tradition by this point, I hid behind a few rocks, used Dragon Rend a few times, shot arrows from a distance, and let Parthenax do most of the fighting. Alduin wasn't defeated though, he just pulled a me and ran the fuck away. The question is, where did he go? To find out, I'd need to capture a dragon, and torture it until it talked. Dragon's Reach, in White Run was the perfect place to make a dragon suffer. The problem is that the Jarl didn't like the idea of inviting a dragon into downtown Whiterun. With the Skyrim Civil War in full effect, he'd need assurances that the Stormcloaks wouldn't attack while we're dealing with these dragons and rumors of dragons. You could probably do all the Civil War quests before trapping the dragon, but I didn't feel like doing that. Instead, I convinced the Greybeards to call for a temporary truce between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials. And with the truce formed, it was time to trap the dragon. This was actually not that difficult. Use a shout to call the dragon, lure it inside, and it'll be trapped. After some polite conversation and less torture than I was hoping for, you can let the dragon go free on the promise that he takes you to Skaldafin. Let me tell you a little something about Skaldafin. It fucking sucks. The reason it sucks is because there are a lot, and I really do mean a lot, of dragons there. Maybe, if you're a pretty high level, you could sneak past them. But I'm not a high level. In fact, I was only level 10. Not really the best situation to be in. The Draugr weren't an issue. I could get by them, for the most part, without any problems. The first thing I tried to do was just outrun the two dragons patrolling the area. That didn't work. The next thing I tried was clearing the Skull Dauphin South Tower and taking refuge inside. The general idea was that I'd do here what I did in the Thalmor Embassy, pop outside, take a shot or two at whatever dragon is nearby, then retreat inside. After spending a considerable amount of time attempting this, I realized it would just not work the way I wanted it to. So I used the Become Ethereal Shout to give me a few seconds of safety, and ran for a nearby building where I took shelter underneath some stairs. I stayed crouched and under cover until I killed the Draugr in the area, then sprinted inside the Skaldafin Temple. There wasn't much to the temple, quite a few Draugr who could be taken out with a single arrow, since I had recently gotten the perk to make sneak attacks with arrows deal 3 times damage instead of only 2 times damage. The two puzzles inside were also pretty straightforward. Now, if you thought dealing with two dragons was bad, try dealing with like, five, and a dragon priest. To enter Sovngarde, you need to kill Nokrin and take his staff. Dealing with him alone wouldn't be that bad, but there were also a bunch of dragons circling the area, just waiting for an opportunity to burn you alive. The good news is that there are spots on both sides of the portal area where the dragons can't attack you. You can't really attack them from there either, but it's something to work with. The shitty part is that there is no just run the fuck away technique that I can use here like I did for the first two dragons. You cannot proceed with the story unless Nakrin is dead. It took a long time, but I found a strategy that worked for me. I used the Become Ethereal Shout to give me a few seconds of invulnerability, then I popped out from behind the wall, shot Nakrin with an arrow or two, then ran to safety before he or any of the dragons could attack and waited until I could use the shout again. Finally, his health was almost at zero, but for whatever reason, I couldn't kill him with an arrow, so I blasted him with fire breath, retrieved his staff, and ran to cover. Now there's the problem of activating the portal. The second you're out in the open, one or all of the dragons will begin to attack. Run towards the steps and place the staff in its hole. Activate Become Ethereal when you hear one of the dragons beginning to attack, then jump into the portal. If you're lucky, you'll travel to Sovngarde before you take damage. We're in the home stretch now. Before you can enter the Hall of Valor, you must prove yourself by besting Sun, the god of trials, in combat. He has a shout that can damage you from an absurd distance, 
so as soon as he starts to tell you that you'll have to fight him, back out of the dialogue and get as far away as you can, otherwise he'll kill you with a shout before you can do anything. Archery or spells are really the only options in this situation. What I did was wall jump my way up a mountain, far enough away that he couldn't attack me, and then I hit him with a few arrows. Once I gained admittance to the hall, I spoke to the three ancient heroes who fought Alduin once before, long ago. They would join me in the fight against the World Eater. Use the clear sky shout with them three times, Alduin will appear, and the final battle for the entire world will begin. To be perfectly honest, this was disappointingly easy. The three heroes attack Alduin and, for the most part, keep his attention away from you. Use the Dragon Run shout a few times to keep him on the ground. All you really need to do is avoid the fall and fire rocks, because those will kill you. Third person mode makes that trivial at best. Keep on firing arrows at Alduin until his health drains, then land the final blow, and Alduin, the world eater, the harbinger of the apocalypse, the firstborn of Akatosh, will be defeated. His life force fades away, and both Skyrim and Sovngarde are safe. Sun sent me back to Skyrim, I spoke to Parthenax one final time, and I beat Skyrim without taking any damage. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Skyrim without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.